We're kind of porky tasting. Yeah. Anyways. Just take a sl- slab off my butt, fry it in the pan. Got a little bacon going. <laughs> now, uh, Long pig bacon. Great. Yeah. Uh, uh, there now is, that everybody out there is feeling very uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're squirming. I, I in have their another seat. Bigfoot story if you want it. Sure. Yeah. 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 We're always game for a Bigfoot story. All right. Well, this this happened, uh, I believe, in the uh, 1920s, uh, 1924, 1923, somewhere in that range. There was a. No, gentleman. It was 1922. Okay, 1922, no. and it, uh, it was, this was in uh, Canada. Uh, I cannot remember what part of Canada, Saskatchewan or some. Something like that. Yeah, I, there is a Saskatchewan. Yeah, I think that's where it was. Yeah. Like that, yeah, yeah. I think the Jerky Boys, not the Jerky Boys, the uh, Trailer Park Boys, talk about it. But anyway, uh, in this area, there was a man named uh, Otis. Yep, Otis. We're gonna call him Otis. Otis. I, can't, I can't remember his last name right now. I had it earlier in the beginning of the show. I should have wrote it down. Um, Otis Redding. No, no, not Otis Redding. Not the, not. The, was he played jazz or something? Yeah, or yeah. blues. No, he was blues. a singer. He was a singer. Was he a singer? He sang that song. Uh, Something by the bay there. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Otis sitting Altman. By, set, setting by the, uh, setting dock, the dock of the, of the bay. bay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching the tide roll. going to blow my head away or something like that. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, that was uh, a <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> all, right, all right, so the guy name was Otis Altman. Okay, Altman. Altman. Otis Altman. Altman. Okay, got it. I got the name. My so uncle. he was uh, he was prospecting. He was gold prospecting yep. in this uh, Canadian province. Old and Uncle Otis. He had a little uh, twenty gauge with him or something of that nature, some kind of small rifle. I can't remember the size of it. But anyway, he had his little backpack and right. da 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 da. So one night he's sleeping and he's in his his sleeping bag and he's got his rifle in the bag with him. Okay, and he feels himself being picked up and slung over a shoulder or something. <laughs> and he's he's like what the hell? And he's like in there, and he can't really move the way he is. And he's like, what the hell's going on? All right. So you know, hours are going by, and he's being you know jumped up and down and banged around and da da da. da and he knows he's being carried, but he don't be carried about what? So finally, he gets to they get this area gets to be light, and he's dropped down on the ground hard. You know, bam, he falls down. He kind of peeks out of his bag and looks out and. Sure, sugar. There's a gigantic, you know, eight foot creature looking down at him, and there's three other ones. There's a, a younger lo- looks to be female because she's got breast, uh, a, a mother, and uh, I believe there was a, a real young one, like uh, maybe a, a young boy. Uh, but these are all Sasquatches, according to this gentleman. All right. Okay. And now uh, he lived to talk about this. Yes, yes, he lived to talk about this. And uh, <laughs> now he had on uh, his in his little in his little backpack thing that uh, you know sleeping bag apparatus he had uh, snuff in his pocket like a snuff can all right and so uh, tobacco chewing tobacco i guess you would call today or whatever right and he had some of that but he was sitting there and uh you know these creatures are kind of looking at him and trying to figure him out and they were having they were talking to each other in some kind of language obviously he couldn't understand uh but it was very clear to him that they were communicating with each other showing intelligence uh, they were studying him, kind of watching him. He wasn't allowed to move very far. He was allowed to stay in one little area. And at night, this went on for like two or three days, the male would leave, okay, and the other three would stay there and they keep an eye on him and that kind of thing. And Please don't tell me there's now a little Sasquatch that looks like no, that. No, no, there's not. This is not a joke story. This, this, <laughs> according to this gentleman, he, he went to his deathbed, still telling the same story. It never changed it once. This really happened, according to him. And he died, I think, in 1964 or 65 or something of that nature. But anyway, um, one morning, you know, he's like, I got to get out of here. I, you know, this is just crazy. You know, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm being kidnapped by, you know, eight-foot-tall creatures that are covered in hair, you know. And right. he, he was scared. I mean, you know, very scared. So he was taking some of his chewing tobacco. Now, for days now, he was watching. And the male, the, the head male was watching him do this was very interested in this so he figured well maybe i can kind of play this a little so he put the can out in front of him and the male sasquatch finally came up and grabbed a ton of it and put it all of it in its mouth and started chewing on it imitate what he was doing but the sasquatch thing didn't spit it out it swallowed the whole damn can all right, so then it's like its throat's burning, you know. It's got the burning throat, and it's and it's it's in pain, you know. It's, it doesn't oh, yeah. know how to handle all this this stuff in its throat, so it's freaking out. It's running around the camp and all this, all this commotion, and the the female one is throwing up its arm, going nuts. He takes this as his opportunity to get the heck out of there. He grabs his rifle and starts running. 
you know, running. Now the female calms down, sees him running off, so she starts running after him because the male is in no condition to do it, right? So he whips around with his shotgun rifle and shoots. He didn't want to shoot it. He shot over its head and it stopped dead in his track when he heard the sound of the rifle going off. And he kept running and running and running, and he didn't stop running. And he finally, you came, I guess he ended up stumbling into a logging camp, and these loggers found him, and they got him, you know, food and shelter, and that kind of took care of him. But I'm jumping over parts of the story. People can look it up if they want on the internet. It's all over the place on the internet, actually. Uh, but it's a great story to read. The gentleman never changed his story the entire time he was alive. His name is Otis Outman? O- o- Otis Oatman, if I Oatman. remember, if I remember correctly, and if I have that uh, the name wrong, everyone, I do apologize. I'll correct it in the next show. Uh, but uh, it was just a very, very interesting story uh, that I just wanted That's to share. Cool, yeah, yeah. Um, and they never hurt him. They hurt. they never harmed him. No, they never harmed him. Never never laid a finger on him where he was harmed any physical way. So he no. and he claims they just yeah. And I, the reason I wanted to tell that story is because I was talking about the village where the people thought that yeah. he was actually. I, I, Good to give a different perspective on things once in a while. You know? Right. Well, uh, I mean, just like humans, I mean, Sasquatch, Bigfoot, whatever. Maybe they're, you know, they're well, curious. They're, well, their temperament is going to vary from, you know, area to area. From region to region. Region to region, depending on what they've experienced in their life. If they've been attacked, they're going to be more apt to be defensive in attack. It's the same thing when we're, exp- like, exploring, like, in, uh, like, the Amazon or, you know different parts of the country you know if you go into these uh regions where there's really isolated people if they're used to uh being attacked you come in there they're going to be ready with their bows drawn like ready to shoot arrows at you or versus if you go into areas where they've experienced nothing but peace and you know are you know when you walk in they're gonna you know hand you food and invite you in so i mean Personal experience is going to change from region to region, you know, based on where what some they, some maybe have a more gentle nature and others may have a more violent nature. Yeah, yeah I mean, because I like taking uh, anthropology courses. I mean, just in in certain groups of people down in South America, like you go from one tribe to another, uh, there's areas where tribes are constantly fighting, and so if you approach their 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 settlement there where where they live. They may not be as ex- um, they're they're going to have bows drawn on you the minute you step in within you know so many feet of their of their area. All right. There's other parts down in South America where you know that they don't fight and you you walk into their their camp there you know where they live and they're just going to start offering you food and places right. to stay mm-hmm. and you know not be weary of what why you're there. So right. I mean. I would, I mean, if Bigfoot is out there, they're going to have the same experiences in places where they are, you know, not bothered. They are, you know, but... You know, another thing, too, okay, just, uh, you know, this is all theoretic, theory of and theoretical. Um, a Bigfoot that may be living in an area where he's surviving primarily as a vegetarian. Right. May, he may have a more gentle nature. Well, like when he was talking about that place up in Alaska... Um, obviously, like he was saying, you know, to, to eat, they had to go out and, and kill. shoot and kill to eat. They did not, they did not have a grocery store. And or, if they're witnessing this. Well, they, some hunters could have been out and they may have killed a few, a big yeah, foot or two. Sure. Could have. Yeah. They could have saw them not knowing what they were. And, you know, I mean, blast shoot, shoot first, ask questions later. And so this tribe of, uh, of Bigfoot, all of a sudden, you know, we're being attacked and killed. We're going to defend ourselves. Point. We're yeah. going to we're going to fight back because yeah. up there, like I said, like you you know, there was no grocery stores. If you wanted meat, you had to go out and and get it. And I mean, if you're back in the 1920s, 30s, and uh, you see a big, huge, hairy beast growling at you, and you have a gun, you're going to shoot first and then ask questions later. Yeah, I'd like to tell another story, if I may, if we yeah. have the time. Yeah, yeah, we got about five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, quick story. Teddy Roosevelt wrote good books. story. Okay, wrote books. Teddy Roosevelt uh, about, wrote books. Good story. About his uh, adventures on the frontier before, you know, when he was a young man. And he right. actually wrote a story about a uh, trapper he met, a very old trapper. And this trapper told him this, this incredible story, and he completely believed the gentleman that uh, Teddy Roosevelt wrote. And this trapper was in uh, the Colorado Mountains at the time with a buddy, and they were trapping beavers. And uh, one night uh, they had set up camp in a very remote area, and uh, they heard something walking around the camp. 
you know, was making all kinds of noise and it really freaked them out. They woke up the next morning and they found gigantic footprints and they, they're like, well, who the heck could be up here with feet that are this large? You know, they were really freaked out about it. And so uh, they uh, went about their business. Next night, same thing happened. Freaked them out. And they could hear the thing screaming, like this weird noise, scream, like almost like a woman screaming, this really loud. And it really freaked them out. So the next morning, they said, that's it. We're out of here. Let's pack up. Let's go get our traps clean. So they split up, and each went to different areas where they had set up traps along the river and the creeks. And when he came back, he was yelling to his buddy. He's like, hey, where are you? Blah, blah, blah. He's like his friend wasn't around. Finally saw his friend, you know, sitting on a stump. He's like, hey, he went up to touch him and he fell right over and his neck was broke ah. but his body was still warm so it just happened it literally just happened this guy was completely freaked out wow. he left everything jumped on his horse and poof, gone he didn't stop riding you know for days i currently just kept riding and riding and riding and this gentleman uh, again when he met teddy roosevelt he was a very much older gentleman at that time and he related this story and he, uh, teddy roosevelt wrote that the gentleman was extremely extremely agitated talking about it um, and uh, Teddy completely re- believed the man's story. Wow. You know, so. That's pretty crazy. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Now, uh, we've got a little time left. Um, I'll go through my spiels. Yes, go through your spiels. My spiels. You are, I hate to say it, but you are listening to Let's Talk Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can hear us all the time. Just go to www.letstalkghost.com. You can hear our shows 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And, uh, hey, and I've been checking our stats. Our stats are doing good. People are going to our website. That is freaking amazing. It's amazing. Now, you can listen to our show every Friday night on Diversity Broadcasting Network. Just go go to their website, and between 8 and 9 o'clock, and you'll hear us. Uh, you'll hear us. Yeah, we'll be show, there. Our show starts at 8. We'll be starts there. at 8. We'll be yeah. there. Now, Sunday night, you can hear us on DTMWickedRadio.com at eight, from 8 till 9. And you can also find us on our website. Our new show goes up every Sunday. You can find us on Twitter. Search for Let's Talk Ghosts. You can find us on Facebook. How about that? You can find us on Facebook, yes. Now, we do have a few. Uh, just search for Let's Talk Ghosts, of course. Now you can, <laughs> <laughs> And you can also see a few of our videos of us doing our show on YouTube. And there's a link on our website to it. We are slowly working on our website. Slowly. Well, I've been so busy that I know. I, yeah. I know. You've been busy. But what can we our, say? Our website is a fraction of what it used to be. But it, it'll it'll after get better getting, someday. After getting uh, screwed over by Fat Cow, we kind of got yeah. It, yeah. It's a little it's a little trickier website to navigate for us for to us. put things on it. Yes. And stuff. but it's getting there. We're getting someday. There. Yeah. Um, paranormal picnic this weekend. Hope hope everybody has a good time. We'll talk about it next week, and we'll we'll have some interviews and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get some content from it we'll because. Get some content. Uh, yeah, um, Specters, who went with us to the Holbert house, will be there, so we can... Uh, Erie Mansion. Or, yeah, sorry, Erie Mansion, wow. I, I'm just making things up now. <laughs> All right. I'm in my own little world. I see that. Yeah. Um, they're going to be there, and we'll talk to them about it, and maybe they... In... Yeah, maybe they have some uh, experiences they can share, or yeah. how they felt about the investigation. Cool. And uh, that's about it. So uh, just remember, when you're out on an investigation, you are the best piece of equipment out there. Everything else are just things that take batteries. And we will see you all on the next investigation.